everybody. Welcome to Car Show Television. We've got a great show for you coming up. I'm here with my wife, Claudia. We're at Jack's Old Fashioned Hamburgers. We weren't quite sure how things were going to go this week because we had a lot of rain yesterday. But as it's turned out, it's been an absolutely gorgeous day to here today. And we're looking forward to talking to some of these car owners and hearing some great stories. So watch, there's a lot more to come. Okay, I'm James Wright. I'm here with the Antique Automobile Club of America, Fort Lauderdale region. We're here at Jack's Hamburgers in Fort Lauderdale, and today we got uh, the manager of the store, Carolyn Littlefield from Jack's Hamburgers with us. Hi, welcome to Jack's. We are celebrating in July our 41st year of business here at Jack's, and what a great celebration to have all these wonderful old uh, classic cars here with classic burgers, and we're having a great day. The Fort Lauderdale uh, region of the Antique Automobile Club of America, or the AACA as we call it, uh, has been around since 1961. We celebrate our 50th uh, birthday uh, two years ago here. We're 52 years old now. Uh, we have in the range of 120 members. Uh, we do something every month with our antique cars. If you look around here today, you'll see uh, the whole gamut from street rods to, uh, to new original cars, to antique original cars. Uh, we do a lot of shows at least once a month at Fort Lauderdale AACA is active doing something with mystery tours and tours of uh, museums and great places like Jack's Hamburgers where we come and uh, let the public look at our cars and enjoy the good music and good food. We've got more shows and more cars coming up next on Car Show Television. Uh, welcome to Oaks Auto and Smoking Racing of Boca Raton, Florida. Your hot rod stop of the past, the future, and the present. Long as it's American muscle, we do them. We do a variety of Ford, Chevy, we've done Chrysler, Buick, and we do frame off cars. We have a paint shop next door to us that handles that part of it. We do drag racing. We set up cars for a high performance street. We have connections for anything we don't do on house that the right people get the right product on your car and do it right. I got into it, my father gave me a, my first car when I was 10 years old. Beautiful cars, fast cars, old trucks, old cars. That's what I'm all about. And what we really do is make people's dreams come true, make people's wishes come true, and do everything we can to make everybody so happy they come back and tell others. My name is uh, Jimmy Bozek. Uh, I'm originally from uh, Salem, Massachusetts. You know, of course, people know where Salem, Massachusetts is, the home of the witches, which probably there are still some there, but now I've been here in Florida since 1975. My, my past experiences was, have been drag racing for about 55 years. I built and drove top fuel cars, uh, injected fuel cars down here in Florida. I drove an alcohol uh, funny car that was on the national circuit. I built this in my garage, built the engine. Uh, it's, a, it's a 1934 replica Ford with a big block 440 cubic inch Chevy engine blown, fuel injected, that develops about 750 horsepower. And then with the, uh, with the electronic fuel injection, there's no carburation. It's got a uh, H71 BDS street blower. And uh, of course it has air conditioning in it and all, all the little uh, nuts and bolts have a Chevy bow tie emblems. Because that's the uh, particular way that I, I want to have people stop and ask questions about this car. 
to the whole engine. The only thing that I didn't do to the car was paint the car. I, think that was I did everything else. Awesome. Hi there, my name is Gene Barano. I'm from Plantation, Florida, an original Floridian for that matter. So, bought my car about 20 years ago, uh, unrestored, drove it for a few years, and then after that, I finally decided to restore it. So I put it in the garage and had two years of restoration work to do on it. Uh, had a great time with it. Uh, we uh, had a few challenges, learned a lot of things we didn't know, I didn't know for sure. So. But it turned out uh, turned out well. I uh, had a great time doing it. Have a great time with it now. Uh, as I said earlier, I've had it for 20 years. Got a six-cylinder engine in it. Six-cylinder factory air conditioning, which is very unusual for this car, particularly in a convertible. So we, we've got that. It stays in the garage. We take it out for car shows and generally to play with. And I have two sons. When I bought the car, we bought it to play with. So bought it to play with and neither one of them would drive it. They were both afraid of the car so they would not uh, not even drive it. One day my son, he lives in Texas, he said, Dad, why don't I come down there and you and I take a father-son trip in the Mustang? So I told him, okay, where do you want to go? And he says, back to Texas in the Mustang. So I said, that's great, son. How am I going to get home? He says, I'm going to fly you home and I'm going to keep the Mustang. So needless to say, that trip didn't materialize anyway. So. Hi there, I'm Michael Cohen from Plantation, Florida, and this is my 1964 Volvo P1800. Um, the car was actually made famous by Roger Moore in the TV series The Saint. He actually drove a 66, not a 64, but this is quite a unique car. It's got a number of different uh, firsts and lasts, which is why I sought to get this car. Um, I actually had a uh, black 64 when I was a much younger man in New York and got rid of it when I moved to Florida. And, it haunted me long enough that I finally got another one. Um, these cars were originally built in uh, the UK by Jensen for the first two years of their life, 1962 and 63. Um, throughout the run, the entire steel was pressed steel by Oxford in the UK, even right through till 1972 when they uh, 73 when they ended. These bumpers in the front are referred to as cow horn bumpers. Uh, this was the last year that they produced those. It also has what we call an egg crate grill. It was the last year for that. This was the first year that they did a drop-down back seat for luggage instead of a, a small area. This car is a manual four-speed with an electric overdrive. And this particular car has about uh, 156, maybe 160,000 miles on it between the two clocks, the one in the car and the one in the trunk. Um, there is a gentleman in New York named Irv. He bought his uh, P1800 Volvo in 1966 and he's uh, currently closing in on 2.9 million miles. They expect him to go over the 3 million, three million mile mark uh, probably by the end of this year. The uh, gentleman that designed this car um, was uh, related to the general manager at Volvo at the time. Um, he wasn't supposed to submit sketches on it and it was a real hoo-ha at the time. He worked for Pinafora and he worked for Gia and submitted the sketches uh, late and arbitrarily so to speak and when they put the uh, sketches in front of the uh, Volvo board the story goes that he, these sketches outshined everybody else um, they seriously considered not doing this car 
because he was related to the management, but they overcame that difficulty and the car was produced. It ran uh, like this for nine years. The last two years it had a, uh, it was called an ES, it had a station wagon type body on the back. It was way ahead of its time as far as design. Um, it drives well, moves well, um, it's just not your average Volvo. Hi, uh, Bob Mandel. I'm from Fort Lauderdale. Um, always really liked cars. When I was a kid, I had a, uh, a craving and was able to pick up a not very good condition 59 MGA. Um, got married, kids, dog. Dog didn't. Job, car didn't fit anymore, and I couldn't afford to fix it up, so I sold it. And for 30 years, waited for the right time, and then about four years ago, uh, started looking around for the same car. It's really a trip because everyone is in mint condition until you get there and see it. I went down to Miami once, a guy had one that you could pull the, uh, the rust off the car, the seats are ripped, the car wouldn't even start, you know, things like that. After looking online for about two years and all over and going and everybody says their cars are perfect and they never are, I found this one, talked to the guy who restored it. It was done, you know, frame off and correctly. I'm not a car expert but got it home and held the breath for an hour while the mechanic went over it and convinced me that it was done right. It's uh, 62. It's about one of the last 15 or 20 made. They made 105,000 and change worth of cars. And uh, what the, the MGB was coming out in 63, so they changed the grill. The grill has a little bit of a curve to it instead of outward where the other one had. The back lights are horizontal instead of vertical. It's got 92 horse, which is a little more than the other one had at the 1600. Anyway. They made some changes to move the car, and uh, hopefully it makes it a little more valuable, I don't know. 1600, 92 horsepower, not a speed demon, no synchro mesh, you gotta make sure you don't shift in the first when you stop, until you stop. Um, if you wanna race, this is not the car, but around corners, a lot of fun. They used to race these cars. I have two grown sons, this is theirs someday. They're already fighting who's gonna get it. I mean, I got a few years left, but you know, they're waiting for it, and if I sell it, they'll literally disown me. So that's how it's going to go through the family. The color I want, it's one of the original colors, and uh, it's the only car I ever wanted, and I'm very happy about it. Hey guys, we are really excited to be coming to you every week on television here in the South Florida area. But if you've missed any of the episodes, just go to our YouTube channel at CSTVFL. The words are right below you on the screen right there. Just that's our handle for YouTube. Or even better yet, just go to carshowtelevision.com. You can see a complete archive of all of our shows that are happening all over South Florida. Don't miss us. Do you love the fabulous 50s? Then you need to be Car Show Gene. Car Show Gene has been serving South Florida for more than six years with their event promotions, featuring the absolute greatest in classic cars. So whether it's a private event like birthdays or anniversaries, or a corporate event for your business, Car Show Gene has several packages available. Serving Palm Beach and Broward County, call Car Show Gene at 561-704-0669 or email her at fab50party at comcast.net. Hello, welcome to Brandt's Automotive. We're a general repair shop specializing in antique and classic cars. We do all sorts of repairs. We've been here for 28 years. We've worked on cars from the 30s all the way up to modern and present day cars. And we specialize in personal service to our customers. And we try to do everything in a one day service. In and out the same day so that you get your cars back and you don't have to rent. Hi, I'm Amanda Linton. Welcome to Ink and Pistons. This is our one year anniversary slash art show hot rod roundup.
is a tattoo shop and an art gallery. So we do tattoos in the front and art gallery in the back. Usually about every five to six weeks we have art shows um, featuring about 30 artists from all over South Florida, some national from out of state. And we just have a big party. We like to get everybody involved and come out, drive your hot rods, and buy some art. Stay tuned, there's more Car Show Television to come. From a couple of car lovers who started Car Show Television, we are proud to serve all the other car lovers in South Florida through our incredibly exciting online brand, carshowtelevision.com. carshowtelevision.com is your one-stop resource for your car culture news and events all over South Florida. Check out our calendar for updates on all car shows throughout the month. You can also see clips and footage from our latest events. Be sure to sign up for our newsletter to get all the latest info sent directly to your inbox. We are really excited to be South Florida's premier news gathering organization for all things related to cars in our area. And we want carshowtelevision.com to be your go-to web destination for car events all over South Florida. If you have a car club based here in South Florida, let us know and we'll list it for free. Do you have a body shop that specializes in interesting cars? Be sure to inquire about having your shop listed on carshowtelevision.com, complete with video of your facilities. To inquire about advertising, call Alex at 561-331-2CAR. See you at the next car show. Welcome to Car Show Television. I'm Jeff Abbey, <clears throat> this is my 56 Chevy Bel Air. It's the first uh, old car I've ever owned. Uh, I don't know why I got the hankering for it. I've always loved old cars and I like to work on them. And when I was younger, I got the opportunity once in a while to, to do that. Um, I got this, this is my daily driver, by the way. I, I gave my other car to my daughter uh, about two years ago. She was in college and so I was riding a motorcycle and that got a little bit old, take going to the grocery and whatnot. So I thought, hey, I can get a Camry. And uh, then I thought about it, you know, I don't really want a Camry. I wanted an old car. So uh, I looked around and I found this one in uh, Napa Valley in California. It's a car built in LA. It lived most of its life in Arizona. It's a 1956 uh, Chevy Bel Air. It was, quote, oh, the top of the line at the time. Uh, it still has its uh, manual steering with a big wheel, which I kind of like, and it's got the old-time seats so you can put your arm around your girl, whatever. But then the guy did some crazy stuff, like he put about 800 watts of audio power in and a subwoofer and all this stuff I don't really use, but it's there if I need it. And then he uh, did uh, put AC in it and electric uh, windows. It's got power brakes with disc. Uh, it's a 350 with a four barrel uh, Edelbrock carb. It's uh, got headers and uh, when I got it, pretty much nothing worked. The air conditioning didn't work, the windows didn't work, they were electric, they didn't work, the radio didn't work, <laughs> you name it, the horn, everything. So I was, I was a little bit frustrated, but then I thought, hey, I want a project, what can I do, you know? Uh, and it was kind of fun. So uh, I started doing the little things and uh, I got a little more serious about it and, uh, you know, worked on the front end some and I had the uh, the engine, you know, slightly modified and uh, I just did some minor stuff to make it, you know, what I want to drive it every day and I have a good time with it. I get in it and I feel like, you know, back in those days when we were kids and, you know, things were just easier and more fun and you always just were happy. You had a smile on your face. So that's kind of what this car does. It, it gives me a big smile and 
I just uh, enjoy having it and uh, hopefully I'll have it for a little while and when I'm done with it, I'll take care of it and the next guy will get to have it and they'll have a good time too. featuring a 1957 Bel Air convertible and uh, it's got 15,000 original miles. Uh, it's got the 283 with a four barrel. The only thing we did on the car uh, that is not original, of course, we put air conditioning in it because we are down here in sunny Florida. And if you notice, we also put out our menu and this is an original menu from Burger Haven in Michigan where we're from and it has the original prices of a hot dog hamburger and fries well the 57 Chevy was uh, it rode pretty good uh, the 58s had a little uh, they secured the sway bars in this one here this came with two sway bars it rides real nice the engine of course in the car is a small 283 with a four barrel it's all original and uh, it's quite nice now if you remember all you young guys the 57 had the big front where we would put our beer and keep it cold now also since we have uh, the the sound I am gonna put the radio on and if you stand in the front in 1957, we used to go to uh, the drive-in restaurant, and we used to jitterbug in the front, and we put the speakers underneath the fenders, so we would actually jitterbug with Claudia, see, and we would jitterbug at the uh, at the drive-in restaurants, and and the sound would be coming right outside of the fenders kind of neat. The owner of this car had this car in storage for about 28 years and uh, he really took good care of it and had it in many shows in New Jersey. Hey guys, this is Alex at Car Show Television. You know, South Florida is really a mecca for the collectible, antique, muscle car, modified, drifting car area. And man, we are just so blessed to have so many car shows every weekend here in South Florida. Car Show Television is all about covering those events in our area in South Florida for you guys, the viewers. What we want to do though is not just show the shiny paint and the beautiful chrome. We want to hear the stories behind these cars. What we want to do is really capture the emotional connection that we as owners have with these cars and what drives us, pun intended, to own these cars. So tune in every week here on Car Show Television and capture not just the beauty of these cars, but the emotional connection that we have with them.